Johnny, how in the heck are you? What's it? Johnny, how in the heck are you? <laughs> um, pissed, agitated, fine. <laughs> I got a mixture, a mixture of shit going on. Yeah, I think I'm going to get something to drink in the morning. <laughs> I can just stand up and say what the hell I feel. And I might be in contempt of court because in all actuality, I do think a lot of it's my fault. I think if I wouldn't have cried to my son over the years. And, and if I would have stood up years ago when I said, tell me if you can't take it, I'll leave. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Yeah, I was oh, talking to a all right. author, Arthur E. Lee. He was talking to me and he was like, uh, he's like, I got a story that I relate to you because I kind of. I don't, I don't like telling the story to some just fucking regular people because most time if they didn't live it they don't uh, understand it or or they're hitting their own fucking kids and they don't want anybody to judge them so Arthur was telling me that uh, he had a stepdad who um, just would always beat him up and he told him to go make him a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or some shit so he went and made a peanut butter sandwich and he looked at it and he said that it was too much peanut butter on it and so he tackled Arthur and he's like shoving the peanut butter sandwich into his face and then uh, right after that Arthur was just walking around by his mom he's like I'm getting a gun I'm just gonna kill him I don't give a fuck I'm just gonna fucking kill him I, why does he have that's to that's nice well that's after well, it is nice what the fuck shoving peanut butter in someone's face he fucking made the damn sandwich and then you're gonna fucking shove peanut butter in a sandwich so obedience does not work okay but after Arthur said that his mom says okay we're leaving and I think Arthur was loved at that point. Arthur knew that someone had his back, and he hasn't been as isolated as me. But he did have similar experience to, to me. So don't be surprised if I stand up. And if they hold me in contempt of court or send me to jail, that's fine. But I, don't know, don't, I don't think you should worry about that. If it gets to a point, just shut up. I mean, just don't keep on talking. But I think you do need to find, you do have to try to make a space in order to talk. Because I feel like they will try to shut you up and try to push you off to the side. Well, that's why I think if I make a statement, I want to make one strong statement, and I think my big strong statement truly is, and I'm just doing this because you have taught me this. Well, I got I it. Yeah. In the court. Well, I think I'm going to stand up and I'm going to say, please help this to stop. My husband is oppressing my son, and he's just trying to survive. Please help. That's all I want to tell you. What it takes from here, I will do whatever I need to do. That'll work. Say, say it place. again. Say it again. Say, I mean, your point, your main point is he's been oppressing my son. My son's just trying to survive. And frankly, you all lived Please your life. Stop this oppression. You all have lived your life. You know, let me live mine. Please, you all are 57 years old. You all have had a family. You've had businesses. You all got to have, you know, fun and enjoy America. America has sucked for me. I have not enjoyed this life. 30 years, I feel like yeah. I've, I've been wasted. Uh, trying to give a shit about a family that just won't give a fuck. So I can't do that anymore. I got to worry about me and my future and generations and, and my family. You. You're 30 years old. You might only have 35 years good years of life. Yeah, well, if I'm fucking, I mean, a good thing I even survived. I could have been fucking Tony crashing my car, you know, at the beginning of all this shit. But, you know, I didn't, I wasn't suicidal oh, yeah, like he was. so many problems. I'm, I'm really, truly, truly, really, really, really mad at myself that I... And I'm a patient and loving enough person that I just tolerate all this shit. And my children are the ones suffering. And they're suffering, each one of you is suffering in many different ways, and I just keep allowing it to happen. So I'm an enabler, and I know that. I'm an enabler because I don't know how to fix it. A divorce offers different things for five kids. And I'm not going to even go on all that in the court tomorrow. I truly, truly have to stand up and give them a statement because I don't even, I'm not even supposed to be there. So I'm, and I'm trying, I'm trying to be a teacher and they're, you know, a restraining order against kids. I mean, like, that's a red flag. And, like, even though it's just probably some asshole on mine is doing it, that's, that's some bullshit. They looked at that and that's what they concluded. Why would the court, why would the court agree to that? Why would the court agree to that? Well, evidently he must have fucking molested them kids because that's the only thing that would make any fucking Oh, sense. yeah, not to mention that's on the internet. Oh, well, that's really, okay, that's great. You got that against my son. But what about the daughter, too? They got two of my kids, somebody. Somebody out there, you screwing my kids over. What the hell do you all want to think is going to happen in this small rural area? What do they think is going to happen in this small town where they go to school? Really, Kelly? You're being molested? Oh, my God. Girl, no, whoever did this shit is not doing anything to protect my children. And yet, I'm only glad I didn't step in the courtroom to do it because I think that I want this to go full blown. 
I am so mad when I sit and think about this. The day that I went home and he lied to me and then he turned around at 2 o'clock and started talking to me, he got in the truck and he went to the courthouse and got an EPO on at 2 o'clock. Yep, yep, immediately, as soon as you had that conversation, that because yeah. I got the EPO that day. And then when he got done and he was satisfied, he picked up the phone and called me because he showed me he showed me one more time. Yeah, you're a bitch. I don't give a you're fuck what you say. You're my way or you're not living here. If it's too hot in the kitchen, get out. And I can go on the other million thousand things. That's all I'm saying. It's not really just about you. I have I have not heard in this thing in my heart that I just wanted to kill him with kindness. And if that's not working and love's not working, then I don't know what else to do with the alternative. I gotta, grant me the alternative because I don't know. I'm done. I think it'd be beneficial to me. I got some things written down here just to kind of practice and go over them. Children's and mother, do they even have rights at family court? They ignored your testimony and the children before, so isn't the family the point of family court to protect the mothers and the children? Isn't that the point of civilization? <laughs> to protect our offspring and to make sure that our kids are in a safe and loving and um, um, positive environment? That's one point. Um, no, my another point is my life is good. I'm on my way up. You know, I just want to get my piece of the pie. Give me a little house, a little picket fence, and just be a humble man, be a simple man. That's all I want to do. I have no intention of going to Gallatin County for any reasons. I will not live in a county that has never protected me. I've only known pain, terror, and violence. It's been it was a 17 reign of terror. The during my childhood, it was an attempted murder three years ago. Yeah, so that's hell to me. I'm done with Gallatin County. I'm not. I have no intentions. Of, um, uh, of doing anything about it. I will not get the justice. Uh, I think justice is, you know, eye for an eye. I will not get the chance to assault him 5,000 times and to, you know, do anything like that. But I don't even care at this point. My, I, I don't like the guy. That's true. But it's gone beyond hate. It's contempt. Contempt. I don't care. I mean, for the last three He's months... He's absolutely no place for anybody to go ahead. I'm sorry. For the last three months, I've been on a bicycle. On a bicycle. What what could he possibly be afraid of, you know, a man on a bicycle in Louisville? I have no weapons. I have no, no inclinations to do anything to him. I, and I've been saying this over and over again that I won't do anything to him, but he has not said, to give me that reassurance. I'd like for him to, for that to come out of his mouth. I will not harm you. I will not do anything to you. I'll let you live your life. That would be nice. That would be nice. So uh, all I want to do is I just leave me alone. Y'all got to live your life. I've just been surviving. Now let me live mine. Let me live mine. Two, two more points. Um, there's two qualities with a psychopath. One is they can't empathize with others. And two, they don't have any anxiety. I don't know if that will come up or not. But no anxiety and you can't empathize. If a psychopath thinks of you as an object, like an apple, if you can, you can cut an apple, and I can cut an apple and not feel bad about it. That's how a psychopath, they can, they can kill you, they can rape you, they can beat you and smack you over the head over and over and over and over and over and over again and never give a damn. That's a psychopath. And I'm tired of, I guess, uh, Gallatin County punishing the victims and letting the perpetrators go free. He tried to murder me. Ask Josh Neal if he thinks attempted murder is a serious crime. And that's it. And lawyer, good conversation with your lawyer. Yeah, my lawyer, uh, he kind of, um, he was going to go with the procedure, whether or not they had jurisdiction. Like you're not even in the fa in the family, like you're in Louisville. So, but he read the things, and he's like, basically, because I came out as nutsack, therefore I am in the the family, even though I know I'm not. <laughs> you know, and I don't care to be, but like. Uh, um, you know, I have a completely different name, so, and I've, you know, we haven't been getting along for like 12 years or so, so, um, but, uh, he, he rejected that argument, then he started thinking about the one argument that I wanted him to go use was, I filed a DVO, and they said that there's no specific act of domestic violence, so I couldn't put a DVO on him because there is no specific act of domestic violence, so I wanted to ask them, what was the specific act of domestic violence that you put, that I did, you know, in the last three years? What was the specific act? Domestic violence is violence in the house. The, you know, violence inside the domicile of where you live. So what was the specific act of domestic violence? And I think that's going to be the line of argument he's going to use. Now, I said possibly I've read his charges about the internet 
And he's like, well, you, did you send him the video? Did you send him these messages? And I said, no. So he's just clicking on these things on his own accord. Well, that's nothing. That's, that's a free speech argument. That's nothing. You're not sending it to him. You're not trying to terrorize him. He clicks on the internet on his own accord. If you don't want to read it, you don't have to click on it. So that's, that's what the lawyer said. But I think that, uh, that that specific act of domestic violence is good. I mean, like, okay, so he says something on the internet. Is that domestic violence? <laughs> is that domestic violence? Will he be there? Domestic violence, yeah, he'll be there. Uh, I, I didn't call him, but I, I mean, I give him the money, so I assume he'll be there. Okay. Um, do you think he's calling? It's still early enough. I, I, I mean, I just like to take all precautions. I know how these. I, I probably should have called him, but I mean, he's not. I don't know. I guess I could try to find his card and give him a, give him a ring tonight. He but I, I like the. Uh, we read the what domestic violence the definition of domestic violence is, and it's you know assault or violence, physical violence, sexual violence, um, or imminent threat of violence happening. And the only thing I think that maybe they might try the internet is that there's an imminent threat. But after me saying that I'm not going to do anything to him, I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm not going to come around you. I'm not going to come. I just want to live my life. I just want to live my life. Leave me party? alone. Leave me alone. What? Can you file an harassment charge? Possibly, possibly, but I guess he wants to see what happens with this hearing, whether or not we should continue it. But I did tell him I want a closure and that, you know, we can do something more if we got to do something more. And so he's listening to me, and, uh, and I appreciate that. I feel like actually I got somebody in my corner for once in my life. Yeah, I, I just, I just want, I, I want everything to be freed and aired and. God, it, it, it's so liberating. I mean, in the past two weeks, you asked if I really done anything. No, I didn't do that, but. I can do whatever I want. Whatever I want. And that sounds great. Yeah, it does. He doesn't, he doesn't make his badgering comments. He doesn't say things. He does accept. No. And I and just, and I took my ring off, and I had a big argument with him, and I had some clothes in the basket ready to go outside the door. So, you know, okay, you can say that you're, I'm doing, and yes, I am in the house. But I am a mother of two children, and unless I go through the court system, I am going to raise those two kids. Yeah. And they have every right to have their mother in their life, in spite of what he says. I was listening so, to this one like a um, song about the ghetto, and they said, "Yeah, it sucks having single mothers, but maybe you should actually ask the kids what they feel about it." You know, when the kids could say that that's my mother, and they know that that's my mother and nobody else's, there's a a special bond or connection there. So. Having a single mother family, I don't know. I mean, you, you keep on saying how great a fucking marriage is, and frankly, I think marriages are terrifying and scary and shitty, and I don't, I don't really well, see Well, after what I've seen, and when I, I mean, you know, when he, this is a wound, he took the scab off, and when he took the scab off for the past two weeks, all the I did three months. was lay down at nighttime and think about stupid shit. And I sit there and I'm like, why am I doing this in my journey? What is going on? What is wrong? What is wrong with me that I don't just hate this guy and just hate him so much that I don't want to be around him? So I don't know why I'm not. I well, I, I don't know. The pedagogy of the oppressed, the oppressed loves their oppressor. Even like in uh, Africa, when the white people was killing the blacks and murdering the babies and the aunts and uncles and mothers and killing entire families, the black people hated the whites, but they loved them. And that's fucking way worse than your shit, but I mean, like... It is, but it's screwed up. Well, it's, 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 it's a power thing. It's the idea that somebody can control you, so you hate them because they manipulate and control you, but then you don't have any other way to feel but... Because the yeah, oppressed... Yeah, you know, the, my that I like. <laughs> the oppressed, I, I mean, they, they're doing... The re, that's why there's a... Humanity can come from the oppressed. Humanity can come from the oppressed because there's love there. But the way that the uh, humanity comes from the oppressed is when they, bake, they break the hierarchy. The, uh, the plan for the oppressed is not to become oppressors themselves, but to restore humanity in both of the individuals. Well, I'm screwing up in both of them. Sorry. No, no, I think if the, the, way you, the way the oppressed restores humanity in both of them is like when they put violence or insults on you, you throw it back at them. And that's what you're doing to us. You need to stop it because that's what you're doing to us. I know. I, I, like I said, I, I look so, at my journey for the past two weeks and I'm seeing a lot of Lucy. I'm seeing a lot of Lucy. More than that, I see a lot of hurt in my kids. 
a lot of hurt. And I think that I'm putting on the hurt on you all but so that I can keep a marriage going and a household and a family. And um, that's sad. Lucy needs to stand up for her own fights. And I don't think that I can. And I think that you've taken it upon yourself because you've had what I didn't get, you got. And um, you're a male who wants to say, you know, enough is enough. 